everyone, welcome to the channel. If you're new, my name is Michelle and we are going to be getting into episode 7 of The Bear today. Now, before we get into the reaction, y'all can drop a like on the video. It really helps it in the YouTube algorithm and it helps the channel grow and I'd really, really, really appreciate it. So, do it. Now, last episode, pretty much everything went wrong. First, the it was the power. It was, no, no, first it was the toilet, then it was the power, then it was the stove wouldn't turn on. It was just one thing after another. Oh, and then we had uh, Richie selling cocaine. And strangely enough, I kind of like that bit of information. It really did show, like it taps into the struggle that a lot of restaurants went through during the lockdown. So I, as, as, <laughs> as annoyed as I am at Richie for, you know, continuing, doing it even after lockdown and all those shutdowns were lifted it does i do like that the show mentioned it like it, it gave nod to the struggle that a lot of restaurants went through coming you know when, when when pretty much everything shut down on us uh let's see now i'm really enjoying sydney and marcus's character i love all their characters but right now sydney and marcus are really just i'm gravitating so much towards them uh marcus there's this attention to detail that not only like it's it's like how can I put it? The writers have such great attention to detail with all of their characters, and Marcus himself is a character that, you know, tries to, even to the finest detail, get right. And that's something Carmi also has, and Sydney also has, and I, I can feel their attention to detail spreading throughout the restaurant. And there's this level of pride, I think, a lot of, uh, a lot of the chefs and the workers in the store in the store in the restaurant are now kind of having and and i don't know it's like you know how they say the boss sets a tone for the workplace i think carmy as you know as rattled as he is as anxiety driven as he is as a little off as he is as of right now he definitely sets a tone of pride it's a pride in your work it's pride in the things that you make and then sell. It's it's just a pride in yourself. And you can really see it permeating throughout all of the workers in the restaurant. And I really enjoy that. It's that little attention to detail, like how in, um, in the previous episode when he's cooking and he's teaching previously, they wouldn't have given two shits. In fact, I think they would have sabotaged him. Now you can actually see them engaging actively listening and that's another thing that i want to give a nod to the actors they do active listening very well like i feel like that's kind of a skill <laughs> like to keep your face engaged as you're like to act like you're actively being engaged <laughs> if you get what i'm saying like it's an it's a skill to to actively listen and to portray and to make sure you show your audience that the character is actively listening to what's going on in front of them and learning and absorbing but also doing so with a, a want to learn i really feel like a lot of these characters have never really been pushed before and now they're kind of it's not that Carmi's put well he's definitely pushing them but there's there's like this it, it's the perfect internal and external like they're internally motivated and they want to learn and Carmi was that external motivation that kind of it was uncomfortable at first because you know we're all so like happy in our little bubbles and then someone pops that bubble and you hate it and you fight back because you know naturally we don't like change but then all of a sudden when you settle into it you're becoming a version of you that you like you are more engaged you're happier to come to work in a way because of something new and fresh and exciting and and there's like this dopamine rush of when you do something good and you get that reward i love that the show is tapping into it and I can't wait to see what we get into this episode. I will say I'm really enjoying the relationship between um, Carmi and his his workers, Sydney, uh, Tina. We saw that conversation with um, he had with Marcus. He's a great leader in my opinion. Yes, he has his faults, but for the most part, I really do enjoy the, the relationship he's cultivating and a speaking relationships as well as the one with his sister. I love that relationship with Sugar and I hope we get to see more of her and this healing that I feel like he still needs to do over the loss of his brother. Anyways, I've chatted long enough, <laughs> so let's get into this episode. Grab a drink, grab a snack, whatever it is you like to do when you watch your favorite reaction. Just get comfortable and let's get to. So you guys want to hear the story or what? Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Let's go, let's go. Come on. Here we go, here we go, here we go. All right. So we're at Sirius, right? Which was the, the bar at the bottom of the floor. Oh, John Bernthal. Loved him in Punisher. Actually, I loved him in everything I've seen him in. Anyway, the name Sirius was named after the goddess of agriculture. Sorry. You and a uh, fucking story. Right, someone's jealous they weren't invited, huh? top of the building there was like a statue of Ceres and her back for all of you historians was facing towards the east and that's because all of trading had just moved to the Midwest we're out all night we're drunk as shit we're fucking high as shit we figured the only place is still open of course Ceres I don't know fuck off sugar we are not getting raised don't do that oh, don't oh, wait, just, we're not no no thank you thank you y'all saved her <laughs> y'all saved her from a white girl moment don't you fucking put raisins in that shit fucking packed it was just like whoo right <laughs> all fucking blackhawk fans and cousin who was there savvy oh the fuck savvy. Savvy. why do i feel like john berthal's always playing him <laughs> like, <laughs> like this feels like him like this is just who he is it's just getting louder and louder and louder and somehow with all the cacafi and all the fucking nonsense with all the fucking hullabaloo yeah we hear this fucking voice ring out and the voice says what are you doing Right in front of us, this guy, he turns around. Who was it? Bill Murray! Oh, Bill hell Murray. no. It's Bill <laughs> they met Bill Murray. <laughs> and Bill Murray says, no, no. No, it's not. <laughs> that is not funny. He goes, give me your phone. Yeah. Yep. And then he goes, <laughs> what's your name? Uh, what the? Says it's to me. Is this his go-to? He tells the Bill Murray, Bill Murray story. Murray. Yeah, no, I understand who that is. If you call me, you can hear it. I believe it's you. still on my phone. I'm good. Oh. Really? Do not make her call. Don't do you it. You want to hear it? No. You guys were at a bar at 6:45 in the morning. The, the whole point of it is that... Who is this? I'm thinking about it. Is this the mother of a child? I kind of killed the mood, huh? I mean, as long as it's not a, you know, daily occurrence, you're at a bar at 6.45 in the morning. You know, sometimes you go out and shit happens. But as long as it's not happening, like... More than maybe six times a year. That's it. That's the most you get. <laughs> Yo, listen up. Oh, shit. Okay, I just yell like that? Yeah, make it worth it. <laughs> Take this green tape off before it gets to us. Get our fingers up, and we can't fuck with this shit. Cool? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Thank you for your time. Okay, I like that. Hey. <laughs> I don't know why I like that, but... I like that they listened. It's Immediately got with it. Great short show. ribs, but on the risotto, I use it at two Hey, T, back. watch those peppers. It's easily adaptable. We can make it for a great to-go. Are you saying risotto to-go to me? I am barely convinced we're ready for to-go just... at all. Chef, Chef, right hey, here. listen to me, please. One, I'm thinking about it, so hold on, please, okay? Everybody said you are incredibly smart, you are incredibly talented. They also said you are incredibly impatient, incredibly green. Uh -huh. I'm here, that's, that's why you not what don't. I'm saying. So, no. so, what are you saying? I'm saying, give me a minute. Now, so you know where I'm coming from. We have finally gotten this to a place where things are sort of, kind of, a little bit chill. I possibly can. Well, there goes the chill. You know, there is something called the Internal Revenue Service, and they collect taxes. And the people in this place, they haven't given that government organization anything in five years. Nigga, y'all fucking with Uncle Sam? <laughs> they will jail you. Please. Do that. Thank you. Who's uh, seizing your house, show? The IRS, rich. Why the hell would he organize it like this? I don't know. I'll ask him when he's not dead. <laughs> You good, man? Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. You know if you need anything, like whatever, you know. 
When I tried out for the Cubs, I was playing on the farm team, and they wouldn't put me up. And I was broke. And I got pretty good at figuring out places to stay. Bro, I'm, what? I'm not homeless. Oh, I just started sleeping here so I could save time oh. on my commute. I'm just so close to nailing these donuts, and they got to be perfect. Oh. So you're a psychopath. <laughs> you want perfection, bro? Start with a shower. Uh. Uh, not even that Wait, but don't... You used to play for the fucking Yeah, I was about to say that too. Like, hold on. <laughs> I wonder if he's telling the truth. I hope he's not homeless. Bar closed. You go there a lot? Nah. Bonner and I don't really see eye to eye. Huh. But nice to know it was there. But now. Every goddamn building is taller than the next one, and they all just look out at this chick with no face, and it's just. Oh my god! What the fuck? <laughs> was that was that a drive bar? Was that intentional? Did I see who shot out my window? I didn't see it, man. It scared the shit out of me, though. I asked you to hang out down there. Man, don't call the cops. All right, I do not give a fuck what you do or who you do it with. All I ask is you do it over there and, you know, keep it at a reasonable volume. Call the cops? No. no. They're sweeping glass up. I know. Tuesday afternoon? Sugar. I'm gonna lose my house. Don't co-sign for a drug addict. I can't close. Yeah, just keep working. It's like nothing ever happened. A window got shot out. Everybody is fine. The end. Because that's what I'm talking about. Natalie. Carmi. You're pissing me off. You're pissing me off. Yeah, I'm about to lose my fucking house. Yeah, yeah, see, uh-uh, no. Mm -mm, no, honey, honey. Oh, honey, Carmi. No, 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 no. Whatever you're going through ain't as bad as potentially losing your home. Is there a name for that thing where oh, you're afraid of something good happening because you think something bad's going to happen? There's a name for that? Life. <laughs> Other night, my kid asked me if my real last name is bad news. I guess I'm in her mom's phone. It's Richie bad news. Oh, shit. Tiff, what the fuck? You know? I mean, he still has his ring on, right? She says I'm contagious. I only call with bad news. Well, that seems to be a you problem. <laughs> Put me out of my misery. Flippy tea. Hey, look alive, chefs. We open. Raka, let's go. Right. How is that dog ears, by the way? Okay, man. Got the, the thing off the cone, everything up. How are you? I see Richie has his charms. <laughs> He's not just a clusterfuck. <laughs> uh, chef, you think that might be a good time for you to try this? Yes. Thank you for asking. It's tremendous, chef. Aw. Toss it a little bit tight. Yeah, heard. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think... Oh, damn. Maybe we start rolling it out as a special soon? Getting closer, yeah. How... how close? I told you it was great. Yeah, she said tremendous view, remember. I didn't tell you it was perfect. And I'll definitely loosen up the sauce. Cindy. Just, you know, Cindy. I don't understand. Chef, it's not ready yet. Yes, Chef, I understand. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Just because the, the sauce or Carmi, don't piss me off. Photo. <laughs> and they're yours. Really? Yep. I had an extra. And I'm Sydney if you need anything else. Oh, he's going to try it and he's going to love it and he's going to request it. I hope he does. Maybe it's not here. No, it's here. All right. Or maybe that, or if he does start requesting it, it's going to let a fire under Carmi's ass. Maybe he might get pissed. I knew it was dumb to co sign. FYI. I would have done the same thing. You want to fight? Please. <laughs> uh, look, I think the thing that just pisses me off is 
thing that I'm probably too embarrassed to admit is that you never ask me how I'm doing. This place is eating you alive, you know. You always blame this place. What do you mean? I mean, you blame the restaurant. How can I not blame this place? I just cleaned up shot out glass. <clears throat> I just want things to be calm. I just want things to be on solid ground. I, I, I want things to feel... Consistent. Yeah, consistent. Uh -huh. Is that why he's putting a stop on changing or accepting Sydney's new addition to the menu? I guess all the time I feel like I'm kind of trapped because I can't describe how I'm feeling. So to ask somebody else how they're feeling, that just seems, uh... I'm sorry, you know, you're, uh... You're right, I want to know how you're feeling. How are you feeling? <laughs> really good. <laughs> just great. I relate to that. <laughs> that scene. <laughs> oh, he found it. There we go. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. when you take just a second, when you stop looking, it'll appear to you. Oh, shit. What's he doing? What the hell is happening? Yo, what's going on with these edges, chef? Gotta be cleaner than Y'all better not start shooting. These niggas better not start popping off out there. What the hell? Where's my gun? Any of you motherfuckers take my gun? Oh my god. Um, please enjoy your beefs. Focus on that. Uh, <laughs> Chicago, am I right? Chicago. I That's right where you're wrong! Huh? Hey, what shut you know? up! Please. Thank you. Y'all niggas better not say anything racist to her. I'll tell you that right now. I'm Sydney. Let's start there. I'm Sydney. John. Okay. Mr. Carl. Okay. Hello, John. Okay. Mr. Carl. Mr. Carl. <laughs> right. <laughs> Associates, good <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> what does he want? Is gonna he gonna start popping? Uh, maybe he, oh he's gonna shoot like he did in the air last time. Every week, yeah. Oh. Sandwiches, simple conversation. <laughs> Feed up. Food is, you know what I mean. All right. Okay. Just feed him and shut him up. <laughs> the class of the guys is out here right now. So don't go telling your auntie, brother, cousins, friends to come down here every Tuesday, okay? <laughs> He's like, shut the hell up and don't be telling nobody at your cookouts. This is just for y'all. That's one way. You're not you when you're hungry type shit. Up again, right? And now this is the third stoplight, right? Uh, he starts, two dogs, he starts two chickens, me, right? four all day, He's please. Two dogs, two chickens, He's four all day. He's revving me. He's revving me. So finally, I'm rolling down. Richie, people are trying to work. Richie, but, yeah, I need to register. Let me just fucking tell Richie. Richie, fuck your stories. Richie, now. Yo, can you shut the fuck yo, up for a Richard, second? Outside, out. I'd smack you with a ladle. Don't talk to her like that. Yeah. Damn it. I'm gonna throw some shit at you. People trying to work. You need to get out of here. You are fucking my shit up. You fucking kidding me? No. My, my game has improved 300% in two months. This this place is, is organized. Okay, Tina. Yo, I love Mikey. You know how much I love that kid. She doesn't understand. She's a baby, you know, walking around thinking that she can handle shit. This is a delicate fucking ecosystem. I don't need this right now. I really don't. I cannot fucking emphasize enough how much I don't fucking need this shit right now. Change sucks. What's that saying? Adapt or die? Adapt, Richie. You gotta, uh, no, you gotta quit. adapt. You need to quit. Just, just a little change. Just a tiny bit. Now, where are you gonna go, Richie? Where you gonna go? Mm, yeah, can't just quit in this economy, that's for sure. You may not land another job. Oh, Richie's going through it. He's like that old curmudgeon. Going through a midlife crisis, seeing everything change around him. Listen, uh, I'm sorry if I was shitty earlier today. 
is on there. Yeah. No, it's not. It hurt your feelings, Sydney. Tell him. What the hell? Oh, scare him off. Kind of feel bad for Richie, y'all. <laughs> He's getting left behind. In a way. Okay, everyone. So that was episode seven. Cer six. Six. Circe's. I think I said seven at the top in the intro as well, but that was wrong. I don't know why I think it's seven. Anyways, that was episode six. Circe's. And this was a lot of character... I don't want to say character growth, but character exploration in this episode. There was a lot there, uh, particularly with the characters of Richie, Sydney, Carmi, and that relationship with he has with Sugar. They, they really just went in on this episode, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I guess I'll start with Richie, because he felt like the one who was really in the spotlight. Honestly, I think Richie is just depressed <laughs> i mean i think it's a bit of depression the irritability the resistance to change um telling old like getting lost in these old stories again uh i think it's it's a matter of seeing everything change and you're not ready to go with it you know, you like the way things are even if you don't like the way things are if you get what i'm saying like there's a familiar uh, familiarity in what you have. And even if you don't like it, it's the misery or the uncomfortableness or the shit fest is better than the potential of things running smoothly because this is the, you know where you fit in this. This feels not like home because it's pretty chaotic, but maybe chaos is your home and moving into order is an end something that works is just a terrifying feeling because you don't know who you'll be in that and i do think maybe his really he like like i said i i've been wondering about that wedding band ever since he and sydney went to go get the caulking in a previous episode uh i noticed the wedding band and the conversation he had on the phone with his daughter and i was wondering about that relationship there but he's actively pursuing a different relationship so i'm guessing he's not married and he just wears the wedding band I, I'm, I'm assuming they're divorced but Maybe they're separated and seeing other people, whichever. But the wedding band is still on. And I do wonder if he just keeps that on for... To try to keep things the same. And I feel like maybe Carmi was also going through that in, in some ways. The consistency, wanting to like find some kind of calm and just... I get, you know, I actually get what he was saying to Sydney on some level. Like things have been so chaotic, so change, like there's been so much change. So people had to like dig deep inside and they fought that for a while, but now people are finally getting it. It's clicking, it's running smoothly. Let's just find a good even. And then once we're comfortable, our feet, are, our feet is a bit set, then we can start making, implementing more changes, but let's just find a consistency where we're at. It's like you, you grind, you grind, you grind, you grind, and then you, you stop right there and then you just kind of settle in, but then you have to like keep going at some point. But I get what he was saying in that regard. Uh, but back to Richie. I think Richie at the end there, just kind of staring out at those guys getting picked up by the cops. It's just, is it depression? I just get the feel of like, it's it's like a not a midlife crisis, which I think is is hormonal on some levels and, and a sign of like just midlife depression and things changing. Um, just just this realization that maybe you're not where you want to be or you are where you you unfortunately ended up in a place where you didn't want to but it's fitting for you and you kind of hate that it fits like you want it to be more in life or something like i just feel like midlife crisis is just a, a shock of of a realization of where you are in life like there's a, something that happens where you realize where you are in life and maybe it's, maybe it is where you want to be or it's not where you want to be. And there's just some kind of internal conflict that arises inside of you. 
and it's like a question of what comes next i feel like once you hit a certain age there's like this shift in your life that you can you can no longer ignore and i feel like that's what richie's going through and it's it's scary and it's hard to come or like envision something on the other side of it but i feel like that's where he's at Poor Richie. I kind of felt bad for him. Not when he snapped at Cindy. Fuck him for that. But <laughs> I get the irritability and, and the annoying everyone and wanting to like get back to the way things are and seeing everyone in that restaurant and particularly Tina just like slide into the way things are going. And I, you know, it's interesting because it wasn't easy for them. And I feel like it. <laughs> Rich is just taking longer. At least I hope that's what's happening. But it wasn't an easy transition for Tina. We saw how she fought it. We saw her uh, combat with Carmen. We saw her combat with uh, Sydney. It wasn't an easy adjustment, but she found her footing and she found a pride in her workplace, uh, an enjoyment. It feels good good you know hearing her say that and verbalize it and and just seeing her flow in the kitchen it's it's good like it's a good thing to find that joy in your work and and just because you find an enjoyment doesn't mean it won't come with hardships or days where you're like ah i'm not in for it you know but i'm gonna do it anyways you know it's 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 all encompassing to find that enjoyment in your work so hopefully richie can find that <laughs> Now that Sugar and Carmi seen in the office, I related to that so much because, you know, it's not like anyone calls me out for not saying, asking people how they're feeling, but it is something that I get asked a lot about how I'm feeling and I don't ask in return. Like, for instance, like my mom. <laughs> like that that's the person who is constantly asking me are you okay like within the span of an hour she'll ask me three times and I don't think I ask her how she's feeling and it's not necessarily it's not for the same like that entire conversation I was wondering if Carmen was gonna say because he felt guilty because <laughs> because that's how I like I don't ask because there's a bit of guilt there in, in asking how she's feeling because I know she's not doing well and I, I you know you don't want to really get into it because there's really nothing I can do to change the situation I can't alter the fact that she's not feeling well I can't there's there's really nothing I can do to rectify it and so it can be difficult hearing that and not being able like to put into action like if you tell me how you're feeling and it's like sometimes you know how you say sometimes people just need to listen and I know that's what I need to do and I don't do it because it's like there's there's a frustration like you want to solve it and it's not easy to hear that someone's not doing well and you can't do anything to adjust that so it's like why am I listening to this am I just listening listening it to hear you bitch is kind of where I go and it's awful of me and so I was wondering if Carmen was going to give that answer because boy I would have related to that because I, I know that's like a bad quality that I have like I feel guilty so I don't ask how people are feeling particularly the person who asked me constantly how I'm feeling and I don't give honest answers because it's not on anyone to change my situation I just say I'm fine because there's really nothing I can tell you that's going to change if I'm not doing any, if I'm not doing well. It's on me to fix that. Like, you can't solve all my problems for me. So that's how, that's how I feel. But Carmi gives an answer of he doesn't understand his own feelings, which that's not the case for me. I completely understand my feelings pretty well. Uh, but Carmi feels like, how can I possibly ask that when I don't even get what I'm feeling and I do think he does arrive to some kind of understanding of a desire for consistency I feel like asking his sister how she's feeling in that moment was hilarious but hearing strange life hearing sugar verbalize it and talk helps him understand how he's feeling and why he's reacting to Sydney the way he is and him apologizing. And I do think Sydney just, I don't think Sydney was fine with what he said. She just said, yeah, I'm good. Like I, she's not gonna stress it or bring more strife in the workplace, especially when there's no guarantee that he's going to get on the same page that she's at. So why get into it? Like, I don't think she's she doesn't see him getting to where she's at where he's ready to implement changes so why even bring it up just say you're fine and we go about our day i kind of get that i get sydney's reaction because like I, it's it's a bad quality trait that that 
conversation he and Sugar had, which I love that relationship and I love the honesty. It's and it's hard fought honesty. It doesn't come easy, but there's a desire to be there for each other and and a love there that gets them there. And they have that conversation. But I really did enjoy that because the entire time I'm thinking about my familiar relationships and how I don't ask that question and why I don't ask, even though other people ask me how I'm feeling, friends and family ask me, but I sure shit don't ask. And it's an awful quality of mine. And I know it. I know why I don't ask. It's because I feel guilty because you're not going to tell me anything I can fix. And I know you're probably not looking for me to fix it you just want someone to listen to but at the same time i'll get so fucking annoyed listening to you i don't want to hear it like <laughs> like what do you want me to do I, I'll, I'm, I'm 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 not a good person <laughs> i'm an awful friend don't bring me your problems don't do it because internally i'm going to be thinking what can I do to fix this for you? <laughs> Cause li me just listening is not going to solve it. And I know, I know sometimes people just want to feel heard that can solve a lot of problems to be acknowledged and heard, but you got to find somebody else. Cause I'm not that friend. Sorry. If you, if you tell me your problems and I can solve it, I'm down with you. You need us to, we, we need to go somewhere. Then we got to, let's get a gps and figure it out how are we gonna get there how are we gonna do this you know give me a problem that i can solve and i'm with you but if you're just listening for someone to li like listen if that's what you're looking for i can't have i can't help you honey i can't i can't now marcus what's going on with marcus y'all is he lying about being like this little perfectionist and he really is homeless because honey if you were homeless we need to get you a bed and a roof we can't play around with that. I need him to have, not in Chicago. You saw how they shot up the fucking store. Absolutely not. He needs to have a bed and a roof over his head and a shower, apparently. We got to solve this. I hope it's just a case of perfectionism and to display that he is really into his work. I hope he ain't homeless. If he is, we got to rectify that immediately. Anyways, this is a great episode. This is a very character driven episode. It really took the time to delve into like a lot of, not a lot of slow moments per se, but moments where the camera lingered on the face, even though there was no talking, no dialogue, but it just allowed the actors to do what they do and really sell the emotion. And the acting on this show is great. And I love seeing John Bertha. I swear to God, that man plays variations of himself in every TV show I see. There's just something so authentic to him. I love him as an actor. He is brilliant. The first thing I've ever seen him is in The Walking Dead. And I've seen him in Daredevil, The Punisher. Uh, I think I've seen him in something else. I just can't recall. But he is... He's one of the, he he's an underrated actor in my opinion. So I'm glad to see him here and he's doing the do. He really I'm telling you, he plays different variations. Like he's an he's an actor that I feel like doesn't act. He's just him. <laughs> if, if, I don't know how else to describe it. If you if you've seen John Bernthal's work, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Like every time he slides into a role, it's like I'm not watching it's like I'm watching John Berthal be John Berthal in some way. Like he's not Shane. He's not Frank. He's just him. Like, I don't get it. I don't know how to describe it. I don't, I think it's because he has such a distinct face, a distinct voice. He's so large in light. Like there's just something so uh, gregarious to him that I'm just like, you're John Berthal. You're like, you're a phenomenal actor, but I will never not remove him from him. I don't know how else to describe him as an actor, but he is very, there's, he, he's very unique and very, it's very signature to him. And I'm gonna end this. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you all for episode seven. I kept calling this episode seven, but it's not episode seven, it's episode six, but now I'm getting into episode seven. So I will see you all there. Bye everyone and take care. And a special shout out to the patrons, Midgey, Tawny, Sithu, Battle Monsters, Tyler, Juan, Beto, Freddy, Marcella, Gabrielle, Alicia, Carmdahl, Sushi Senpai, Cozy Cobra, Gazelle, Maddie, Victoria, Queen Lydia, Dexter, Chair Shot Cat, That Weird Person, Shirley, Salty, Cami, Klaus, Cersei, Kachan, Nino, Donovan, Nicole, Sayla, Nathan, Casey, Liam, Pierre, Glitchy Glam, Autumn, Soapy, Morgan, Jordan, Zach, Nandy, Jess, Alexander, Reen, Max, Ricky, Jake, Amario, Jamie, Jesse, Mate, Jalil, Melissa, Teddy, Sebastian, Ann, Van, Chris, 
Crystal, Soul, Jacob, Rosa, Aslan, Jordan, Cool Gal, Nan, Bobo, Lucas, Maria, Alex, Mads, Vivisha, Karen, Bree, Jackie, Sammy, Alexander, Erica, Julie vs. Jell, JD, Jacob T, Sarah, Melissa, Christine, Uga, James, Valerie, Julia, Oliver, Sam, Michael, Mr. Nobody, Jamie, Harper, Caitlin, Velasca, Ethan, Miko, Emma, Sam, J. R. Finway, Melanie, Brenda, Nate, Becky, Courtney, Mel, Ted, Axel, Diego, Santina Moore, The Winter Times, Jenny, Zach, Dominic, Wendy, Ash, Valario, Zachary, David, Kage, Darren, Jean, Nathaniel, Karen, Christian, Rob, Danny Girl, Marcus, Omar, Randy, Kuehler, Dwayne, Logan, Sarah, Alex, Seb, Samuel, Jaden, Viliana, Joshua, Lima, Barbara, Laramia, Oliver, Vili, Ignorance, Reno, Academy, BTS, America, Heidi, Jasmine, Codpeer, Mel, Madeline, David, Power, Matthew, Haley, Chelsea, Estrella, Axel, Latoon, Trey, Cade, Erica, Nina, Rafiki, X, Toby, Andrew, Demetrius, Tiffers, Genevieve, Rip, Maurice, Dismitri, Aldebaran, Tor, Nick, HBK, Itaco, CD, Eric, The Dingo, Lit King, Koala Banana, Chat Mocha, Chris, Seelor, Treya, Matt K, Ito, Emily, Joseph, Flash, Theo, Paige, Alexander, Ingrid, Chase, Enid, Larissa, Joe, Alan, Danielle, Riley, Smanx, Bianca, Indra, Joshua, KL, Ash, Malike, Muda, Wombly Burger, Endless Chi, Robert, Paul, Abby, Dreal, Hobbs, Clef, Eric, Danny, Michael, David, Rhea, Kiera, Nof, Felix, and Sunchi. Thank you all so much, everyone. Take care. Thank you.